Here, we will see the difference between static testing and dynamic testing. And with this, we will address the third objective. Explain the difference between static and dynamic techniques, considering objective types of defects to be identified, and the role of these techniques within the software lifecycle. This is a very important topic, and it is marked as K2. When we talk about static testing and dynamic testing, there are two important points which we shall know. First point is static testing and dynamic testing have same objective, that is, finding defect and type of testing you perform, the main objective is to find defect. But what you need to keep in mind is different testing finds different types of defect. For example, during static testing, we can find spelling mistakes and violation of coding guidelines, which we cannot find during dynamic testing. But during dynamic testing, we can find defects related to functionality, which we may not find during static testing. That is why you need to remember that objectives of static testing and dynamic testing are the same, but they find different defects. We already covered difference between static testing and dynamic. I hope you still remember these points. Here, I will quickly go through it. The first point is static testing is conducted without execution of code. Dynamic testing requires execution of code. The second point is static testing can be used to improve the consistency and internal quality of work products, while dynamic testing typically focuses on externally visible behaviors. The third point is static testing is cost-effective, while dynamic testing is less cost-effective. Fourth point is about examples. Static testing examples are walkthroughs and code reviews, whereas with dynamic testing, you have to perform functional or non-functional tests. Before we look into the example of static testing, let's have a look into this picture. We already know that static testing is performed before the code is implemented, and if found the defects before dynamic testing, it takes less effort and less cost to fix them. Now let's see the different types of defects which static testing can find effectively. First defect is requirement related. For an example, consistencies, ambiguities, contradictions, omissions, inaccuracies, and redundancies in the requirement. Second is design related. For an example, efficient algorithms or database structures, high coupling, and low cohesion. High coupling would mean that your module knows way too much about the inner workings of other modules. Modules that know too much about other modules make changes hard to coordinate and make modules brittle. Low cohesion is associated with undesirable traits such as being difficult to maintain, test, reuse, or even understand. Meaning of high coupling and low cohesion is not important, but it is important to know that these terms are related to static testing and they are design defects. Third is coding defects. Example of coding defects are variables with undefined values, variables that are declared but never used, unreachable code, and duplicate code. Main focus of static testing is to find such defects because these defects cannot be found in dynamic testing. For example, unreachable code and variables which are defined and not used occupies memory and may result in slow performance. Next is deviations from standards. Example is lack of adherence to coding standards. In static testing, we can easily find these defects. For example, for C coding, we have MISRA guideline. So we check code with respect to MISRA guideline. If we find any deviation, we report it. Next is incorrect interface specifications. For example, different units of measurements are used by the calling system than by the called system. Suppose the calling function is providing temperature value in Kelvin, but the called function is expecting temperature unit in degree. Such type of issue we can find using static testing. Next is security vulnerabilities. For example, susceptibility to buffer overflows. This point is very important. Just remember, the buffer overflow can be detected by static testing. Last point is inaccuracies traceability, like missing tests for an acceptance criteria. 
We know that we have to provide the traceability for all our work products. If we missed any, like or if we linked them incorrectly, we can find such thing in static testing. This topic is very important. You have to remember these defect types and their examples.